Hello teachers and welcome to section 1.2 exploring with patterns or explorations with patterns. Um, we are right in the middle part two of our lecture talking about explorations with patterns and we learned about arithmetic series and sequence excuse me and we're talking about other types of sequences but let me remind you what we're really doing big picture in this section we're trying to find patterns and if determine a pattern holds deductive and inductive reasoning and when to use them we're going to cover different types of sequences and again as a reminder we've already covered the one listed here the arithmetic but we still have yet to talk about the geometric and the Fibonacci and finding the nth term of certain sequences and using differences to find a pattern. So just a little bit more to go, so hang tight. Now, another really cool type of sequence is called a Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is defined by, if you'll notice, the next term is the two before it added together. So notice this notation. I know sometimes the, the, symbol, the symbols can kind of throw you off. So your nth term of a Fibonacci sequence is equal to the n minus one term, which just means the term right before this term plus the term right before that term. So really you just add the two prior terms. And this notice this is for n equals three, four, and five. So not for the first two terms, but for the third, the fourth, the fifth term, and, and forever. So how do we do this? So the sequence starts with a one, one, that's standard, one, one. So first a sub one is one, a sub two is one. But a sub 3, you use this formula. So what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to add 1 plus 2 together, and that's going to give me 3. And then I add 2 plus 3 together, and that gives me 5. And then I add 3 plus 5 together, and that gives me 8. So the next term is just the one before. How would we get the next one in line here? I add 89 plus 144 together, and that will give me 233. Okay, so that's a Fibonacci sequence. It's pretty cool. You just add the previous numbers. Fibonacci sequences are in nature quite a bit. From what I understand, the center of a sunflower, if you ever looked at those big old centers of a sunflower that spiral out, that's a Fibonacci sequence. So check this out. Just pulled it up for you. Sunflower, Fibonacci, how are they related? And it says the sunflower seed pattern used by the National Museum of Mathematics contains many spirals. If you count the spirals in a consistent manner, you will always find a Fibonacci number. So they look, they put a zero first. Our definition started with one, then one. But if you put a zero first, notice it works from the beginning. So zero plus one equals 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 1 plus 2 equals 3. I like that definition a little bit better. Anyway, below are the three most natural ways to find spirals in the pattern. So we're not doing that, but if you count the spirals, it says it's always a Fibonacci number. So a lot of growth is based on Fibonacci. It's really interesting. You can go down a rabbit hole to check all that out. Next, we want to find a geometric sequence. Notice this is a sequence in which each successive term is obtained from the previous term by multiplying by a fixed non-zero number. So it's like a ratio you're mul multiplying by. It doesn't even have to be a whole number. So for instance, the sequence 2, then 6, then 18, then 54, 162 is a geometric sequence because the ratio between each term is 3. You see that? So we did 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 times 3 is 54. 54 times 3 is 162. Again, once again, you know what I'm going to ask. What is going to be the next term in the sequence? 162 times 3. Which would give me, stand by. How about 486 would be the next term. And then to get the one after that, we multiply it by 3 as well. So that's called a geometric sequence. Now here's the definition that's going to be helpful in any math class. If n is a natural number, then n factors 
is considered a to the n. You know this as a classic exponent, right? So a to the n is a times a times a times a n times. But what is really important to know is that a to the 0 is equal to 1. That's a separate definition. Um, if n is equal to 0 and a is not 0, so this does avoid the case of 0 to the 0, and that's something you wouldn't run into until a calculus class. It's called an indeterminate form, but we're not working with that right now. We're just working with um, a to any number up here, any whole number, okay, it's counting number, so a to the third, for instance, is a times a times a, but surprisingly, a to the zero is defined to be one. And if you'll remember your rules of exponents, that's really why that needs to be defined as one. So keep that in mind as you do these problems. a to the zero is one. And we need to mention other types of sequences too. These are figure eight numbers. They are sequences of numbers that can be represented by dots arranged in the shape of geometric figures. They're really, really cool, right? So these are triangle numbers. So one, and then three, and then six, and then 10. That's the number of dots it takes to make a triangle. What would be the next one in line? Well, how would we get another row, right? That's what we're really doing. So we would put one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here, right? I'm not going to make them bigger than that would, that would help you see. But I added one, two, three, four, five to the 10. So the next triangle figure eight number is 15. And then you could add another row, and that would give you another figure eight number. All right, and you can do the same thing with squares, right? So squares are easier for me to think about. So four, I mean, one, of course, is our, our first square, although does it really make a square? And then four, and then to get another square, you need, because you got to fill in the middle too, you need nine, and then 16. Now, how are these related? I bet you can see that. Then in this case, You've got, they're, they're perfect square numbers. What's the next one in line? 25. What's the perfect square after 25? Hey, how about 36, right? 7 squared is 49. 8 squared is 64. So square numbers really are perfect square numbers. Pretty cool, huh? Now here's an interesting problem. It says use the difference to find a pattern. Then assuming that the pattern discovered continues, find the seventh term in the sequence. Okay, so notice what's happening here. Between 5 and 6, there is 1 apart. 14 and 6, 14 minus 6 is 8. 29 minus 14 is 15. 51 minus 29 is 22. See so what we're doing here? We're just subtracting. But then they ask us to find the difference between the differences. Fun, huh? Right? <laughs> so, okay. So, 8 minus 1 is 7. 15 minus 8 is 7. Oh, 22 minus 15 is 7. And 29 minus 22 is 7. Now, they ask us to use this pattern to find the, which one? The seventh term. Notice we have one, two, three, four, five, six terms. So they're asking us what goes next. Uh oh, what goes next right here? Did someone, what's supposed to do on my computer? All right, so let's think backwards. Don't read this paragraph at the bottom. Let's think backwards. So we need the difference between this number and this number right here to be seven. Am I right? If we follow this pattern. So what goes right here? Well, 29 plus 7, right? Feel comfortable with that? So 29 plus 7 is 36. Now that we know that, what's going to go right here? Remember, this row is the difference between the above row. So if we know the difference between the 6th and the 7th term is 36. So if we add 36 to 80, we should get our answer. Right, so 80 plus 36 is 116. Boom, we got it. So 
if you look at their explanation below, it does the same thing, but I really like it written right here because you can tell what's going on a little bit better. You're just following the pattern. So I think we met all of those objectives that were listed at the very beginning um, of each of our part one and part two video. And part one was much longer than part two, but hopefully this will get you for the, through the homework and help you understand a bit more about arithmetic, geometric, Fibonacci, um, did I say geometric? And um, really these other odd, this is a very odd series we have going right here, but it's interesting. So if you have any questions, as always, please let me know, reach out, and we will handle any of your questions. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day.